Hi, and welcome to Dishing with Diana. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy meal for those busy families who have so many extracurricular activities after school. I have three kids of my own, and we're always rushing off to Girl Scouts or cheerleading. So this recipe is something you can whip together in 15 minutes and get to those other activities that you have during the day. Tonight, we will be preparing a chicken and broccoli braid. We can whip this up in 15 minutes. First, we're going to begin with three peppers. You know, the flavors in these peppers are very similar, but I like to use the different colors so that my kids will be like, oh, let me try this, this looks interesting. Now we're only using half a pepper, and I'm just cutting it into smaller pieces so I can chop it into bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna cut my other two peppers into the same uniform size as I did my first pepper so that when I bring my chopper in, I can chop them equally and evenly. Okay, now that we have everything chopped into uniform pieces, we're gonna take our handy dandy chopper and chop it some more because we want them in little tiny bite-sized pieces. And that's the size you want it to be. Little bits and pieces so that it has a confetti look in your meal. Now I'm going to cut up my other peppers so that they're the same size as the first batch. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces chopped finely, we're going to just throw that into our mixing bowl. I have a large mixing bowl that I'm going to do my main center in. Boy, these were some juicy peppers. Okay, now we're going to add our broccoli to our mix. We're going to chop our broccoli the same way we chopped our peppers, but I'm going to chop them just a little finer because you know how children are about green vegetables. So I'm going to try to chop them up so they can't quite tell what it is. This is approximately a cup and a half of broccoli. Now I did use frozen broccoli, uh, but I did let it come to uh, room temperature before I used it. It makes it easier to chop. Okay, we're going to clean out the bottom of it, and we're going to set it to the side, and now we can place our chopped broccoli into our mixing bowl. Now that we've got our vegetables out the way, we're going to add our chicken. Now you can use just about any kind of leftover meat you have in the house. Um, after Thanksgiving, I use a little bit of turkey. After Easter, I use a little bit of ham. My girlfriend loves tuna, and she'll throw tuna in this dish. You can kind of use whatever you have on hand. Today, I'm using a little bit of leftover grilled chicken from a barbecue we had yesterday. So we're going to chop our chicken the same way we chopped our vegetables. See how fine this is? This is the texture you want it to be. You want it to be a non-knife type of food. Once you slice it to put it on their plate, they should be able to easily break it with a fork and eat it. And this is approximately another cup and a half to two cups of chicken or whatever other meat you would like to use. And that should do it. Okay, we're going to clean this out. We're going to add our chicken to our vegetables. All right, now that we have our meat and our vegetables in our main bowl, now we can add some cheese to this. I like to use a mix of cheddar with a mix of Monterey Jack, but you can kind of use whatever cheese you like to use. Um, sometimes when I'm feeling like I want something a little more chewy, I use a little bit of mozzarella in my, in my mix. So you can kind of go with the flow with that. So we're gonna add our cheese. Now we're gonna add a little bit of seasoning. I like to use the grilled chicken seasoning. It gives it a little hint of a smoky flavor and has a lot of good herbs and spices in here. So I'm gonna add approximately a teaspoon and a half and a dash, just because. Now we can add our mayonnaise. I use mayonnaise to bind it together. It gives it a nice flavor. So that's approximately a half a cup of mayonnaise. So now I'm just gonna give it a good mix. And as I mix, you can see how all the pretty colors are mixing together. It makes a very appealing final product when it's all baked. Now we're gonna take two cans of crescent rolls and a lined cookie sheet. I line my cookie sheet with a Silpat liner. Um, nothing sticks to this thing, I love it. I bake cookies on it, I bake meat on it. It's just fabulous. So I'm lining mine with a Silpat. However, you could use parchment paper to line yours, which will work just as well. The great thing about this recipe, it's one-stop shopping. You've got your bread, your vegetables, your meat, all in one big package. You can cut it, serve it, and you can be on your way. So we're gonna open two cans of crescent rolls. Ah, popped on me. We're going to just unwrap it and leave it in a rectangle. We're going to lay them out like tiles all next to each other. I like to use a roller just to kind of seal the edges together. 
because you do have those perforations from where you're supposed to um, take them apart to roll them into crescents. So I like to just roll it over just to kind of close all of my little gaps. There we go. Now the easy part. You can put your filling right down the center of your crescent rolls. This is a really hearty and nutritious meal to serve your family. You have your vegetables, you have your dairy, you have your grain. And the kids kind of like it. It has a nice, nice flavor to it, not too um, spicy. And like I said, it's easy to whip together in a very short amount of time. I've been known to do it in the morning, stick it in the refrigerator at this point, and then come home later and finish it off. Okay, now you want to flatten it out to be sort of a flat log right down the center of your crescent rolls. Being careful not to let it fall out the ends. Now I'm going to take one of my knives and I'm going to slice some strips down the side. So one, two, three, eight, nine. However many you put on one side, you must make the same amount of cuts on the other. So we're going to do it again. Eight, nine. Now here's the fun part. You're going to make it look like a braid. So you're going to take your two sides and you're going to bring them up, twisting in towards your, your knuckles. So when you come up, you bring it up, twist your knuckles towards each other, and touch the ends and bind them together. And you're going to do that for each segment that you have just recently cut. So you go up, twist, connect. Up, twist, connect. Isn't that pretty? Your neighbors will be in awe. Now all you have to do is pop this into a 375 degree oven for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. And now we wait. All right, our chicken and broccoli braid is done. And isn't that beautiful? You want to serve for an adult, you want to give them a good two inches. For a child, I would say a one inch slice. So we're going to slice this one right out the end. Here you go. A complete meal and a nice neat package. Enjoy. Hi, it's Deanna again with another helpful hint for the Kitchen Diva. We're going to make some homemade vanilla extract. You ever find yourself on Christmas morning and you run out of vanilla extract and the store is closed? Well, here's a helpful way so you'll have vanilla extract for the next seven years. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take three fresh vanilla beans and we're going to split them right down the center. So you insert your knife in the center and drag it out to the end, turn it around and do the same thing to the other side. You have two pieces. Now we use three vanilla beans so that we have a nice strong extract. There we go. Now we're going to take our beans and we're going to place them in a nice clean bottle with a rubber stopper. All right? So we're going to take our beans, put them in our jar. Now here's the best part. The secret is vodka. You go to your store and you get yourself some premium vodka. Now I'm not saying go out and buy like the $85 kind. A good middle of the road vodka will do just fine. And you want to fill your bottle almost to the top. Now all you need to do now is to close your bottle up, seal it, and put it in a nice cool dark place for the next six months. And then you will have yourself some premium high grade vanilla and you can use it for just about anything. Another good thing is, as you use your vanilla and you get down to maybe about the, the bulk of the bottle, you can just add more vodka to it and let it sit for a couple of weeks and you'll have more fresh vanilla. And you can do that for the first two to three years of using this bottle. And you'll always have fresh vanilla on hand. And those are my helpful hints for the Kitchen Diva.